<laughs> okay. Okay, so good morning, everybody. Welcome to Kabbalah Cafe. So we have every week over here at Bagel Cafe. Thank you all for coming. Firstly, we give a big yashakoach to Gershom and Rachel Dandy for sponsoring this uh, week's Kabbalah Cafe in honor of Rafua Shlema of Michal Zev Ben Genendel. Should have Rafua Shlema complete recovery. And thank you to Mordechai and Raya for broadcasting and hosting this share on Zoom as well. I'm going to try to speak a little bit lower. Hopefully, we'll all hear. I need my voice. It's already sore. I need it badly for the next 48 hours. So please understand. We'll say Lachaim. Okay. I also want to dedicate this edition of Kabbalah Cafe in memory of a special man who passed away last night, Dr. Zev Zelenko, blessed memory, who was uh, very famous for the Zelenko protocol. He saved millions of lives. May Hashem bless his neshama and strengthen the neshama of his wife and his eight children. And um, Hashem should, should take away, Hashem should be the ultimate, do- Hashem is the ultimate doctor and he should heal everyone who needs a refor Amen. Amen. Tonight and tomorrow is a very special day in the Chabad calendar. It's the yard site of the Rebbe, Gimel Tammuz, the third day of Tammuz. We have a big davening tomorrow and, and uh, for bringing. And our guest speaker is going to be Rabbi Newman of Long Beach, California. And so it's going to be a very special for bringing. We're looking forward, hopefully, to seeing everybody there. I want to start off with a story from Rabbi Beryl Baumgarten. Rabbi Beryl Baumgarten was, I believe, the first shaliach in Argentina. And being there in Argentina, one of his jobs was that he that he was a Rosh Yeshiva in the local Yeshiva. And in one Shabbos he came to the to the Yeshiva and he smelled from the breath of one of the boys smoke from a cigarette. And so What's going through his mind were two two opposite things. On one hand, he said, he said to himself, this young man, this boy is a precious neshama. He comes from a wonderful family. He said, if I throw him out of the yeshiva, it will totally break the heart of his family. And... Um, who knows what's going to happen to him? But on the other hand, it's a terrible example to yeshiva. A yeshiva with frum boys. The boy comes back. We can't leave it at status quo. There has to be smoke. Smoked in shops. It was clear that he... And so he didn't know what to do. He had a very big dilemma. And so Rabbi Baumgarten wrote a letter to the Rabbi and he asked him what to do. And the Rabbi, the Rabbi answered with a quote, a quote from a medrash which is called Avot de Rabbi Natan. Avot de Rabbi Natan, 12th chapter, Mishnah Gimel. That's all the Rabbi answered. So he right away looked for the Sefer of Avot de Rabbi Natan. And he says, it says in there as follows. What does it mean when it says in the verse, "Verabim heshiv me'avon"? That says that he brought back many people from sin. Speaks about Aaron Cohen, which, by the way, in today's parsha, we talk about the chumash. I believe from two days ago, from uh, Wednesday, we learned about the passing of Aaron Cohen, and when he passed away, "Vayivku kol beit Yisrael." All of Am Yisrael cried. When Moshe passed away, it also says that they cried, but it doesn't say Kol Beit Yisrael. All of Am Yisrael. It says, Bayivku Bnei Yisrael. Am Yisrael cried. 
what's the word call everyone? Because Aaron Cohen, he pers- didn't only like peace. He was also Rodef Shalom. He pursued peace. That's why everybody felt his loss. So the Medrash explains. When Aaron went in the street and he met someone, even a Rasha, Upagasha Filu Adam Rasha, Amarlo Shalom, he would greet him and say, Shalom. How are you doing? How are you feeling? Good morning, good evening. And the person would say to himself, the next time he wanted to do an Avera, he would say to himself, he would say, next time he was about to do an Avera, he would say, Animit Bayesh, may Arona Kohen. I'm embarrassed from Aaron. He's going to see me the next time tomorrow or tonight in the street. And I'm going to say, you can tell me Shalom, but. How, how can I do a sin if I'm going to meet such a great person who thinks about me? For Rabbi Baumgarten of blessed memory, that switched his mind, his way of thinking. He realized that he has now a shlichut, a mission. From then and on, he went and he, thanks to the Rebbe's inspiration and in sending him this, this source, this mara makom, He showed extra affection to this young man. He spoke to him more often. He asked him how he's doing. He tried to be like Aaron Cohen. And on Shabbatot, he tried to make himself as if he lost his sense of smell. And he tried to be oblivious of the smell of, of the cigarettes that came from this boy. Years passed. He looked totally different from the way he was in Yeshiva, of course. He says, he meets Rabbi Baumgartner, he says, Kvodarav, you recognize me? So it took him a second, he said, of course I recognize him. He said, I want to tell you a story. At the time when I did not keep Shabbat, you brought me closer. And that at that time I didn't believe in anything. I was in a very low state. But I had this feeling that if I am going to rebel, if I'm going to to project that I don't care and do my own thing, I was sure that they're gonna th- that you're gonna throw me out of the yeshiva, and then I'll be able to have a good life have a good life the problem was that you showered me with love you you made you showed me that Hashem cares about me and this young man became very uh, emotional and he said Rabbi Baumgarten you see that I have tzitzit I have five children from Hasidic children this is this is very appropriate to talk about this inspiration from the Rebbe, which is just a few hours before the Rebbe's yard site. And that is what's called a ro'en ne'aman, a faithful shepherd. As we're going to see soon, when the Parsha, we can connect it very strongly to at least one point, if not more, in the Parsha. You have to understand, Am Yisrael comes to Moshe after Miriam passed away, and they say, well, I want water. So Hashem says, speak to the rock. Okay. So Moshe tries to speak to the rock. The water did not yet come out. After a couple of times, he takes the, the staff. He hit the rock. Why did he do that? Now Moshe was so dedicated to Hashem. First of all, why was it such a bad thing? Let's say Hashem told him only to talk and he only hit the rock. They're, they're both correct. Correct. But he should have only done that. Of course, the third time. But unfortunately, he also 
hit the rock. Now, in Parshat B'Shalach, right after the Kriyat Yamasov, he was told the he kitab batzor wasn't sela, it was a tzor. Tzor is more of a of a sela is like a rock. You find the bigger rock, a smaller rock, but tzor is is the original rock. You go to mountains of rock. That's that's the uh, there must be a word for it. Foundation stone. Foundation stone. Thank you. That's the tzor. And then Hashem told Moshe the he kita batzor. So Moshe was hit the rock and water came out from Israel. But let's say, let's say he would have only hit the rock. They're both miraculous. Whether you speak to the rock and water comes out, that's miraculous. And whether you hit the rock, it's a gum you see. It's also miraculous. So either way, he that's right. It's also miraculous. Through especially through so why is it such a bad sin that this is one of the monumental sins that we have in our history because of that Moshe and Aaron were both un, uh, unable to come into Eretz Israel Anachnun and Saim Paul we have the great merit to be here in the greatest place in the world Eretz Israel and Moshe yeah. Moshe who cared for his nation unfortunately he was not Zohar I have to see the exact wording in, in the Hamash. But at the end of the day, he told him to speak. And we know that Moshe was the number one Eved Neaman, trustful servant of Hashem. It doesn't seem to, to, to click together that that Moshe, of all people, should not do exactly the way the instruction that Hashem told him. That's a great question. There is some answer. I'm not sure if it's going to be uh, it's, it's going gonna, it's gonna to suffice, but I think that actually most of today's share is going to talk about the question. At the end, we'll see if, the, if there's an answer. Osha ken, Osha lo. So, the Ora Chaim Akadosh he explains as follows that Moshe made a mistake to think that he has to hit the rock because he based it, his decision on an earlier an earlier instruction, like we said before. But it still does not suffice. Because right now Hashem said to talk to the rock. So if you think about all of these different stories that we had about how we came out of Mitzrayim and we and the, how we had water and who passed away and all the different stories doesn't seem to be important for a Torah. Torah milashon hora'a. Torah is a lesson. Torah should be a book of mitzvot. So why should we have all these stories? Why is, why is it important how Moshe came into Israel, if he came into Israel? To tell me the mitzvahs. Keep Shabbos. That's the Rambam of today, the mitzvahs of Shabbos, the Chagim, purific- beginning of the sixth parsha, Tumah Tara, impurity and purity. So why are why why are the stories important? Story for living Torah instead of just do's and don'ts. What what do you mean? Please explain. You said why the story? Why Correct. Why the story? Don't need the characters to come to life for us. So that just the do's and don'ts, don't do this, you can't do that, you can't do this. So for that, we could have a special volume in the Tanakh, or several volumes, of all of the interesting, fascinating stories, and there are the more the more svarim we have. But the Chamisha Chumshe Torah, the Torah, the five books of Moshe, Lich Ora, seemingly, should be strictly Hora. Torah is the same word as Hora. Lessons for us on... on, on uh, Torah includes the written Torah and the oral Torah, or isn't it? No, Chamish Chumshi Torah is only the five books of Moshe. That's but Breshit Shmot by Yikra Midbar Tzvarim. Then we have the 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 Nach the Navi, the prophets, and the Ketuvim, the 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 the, the scriptures, the Tanakh together. That's the Torah Shabbatav, the written Torah. Then, starting from the Mishnah, 
start to explain all of the different mitzvot and the halachot and what it means, how to put what tefillin are and how to build a sukkah and all the other mitzvot. Because they're unclear alone without the, with just the Tanakh itself. Well, we could add maybe a few books in the Tanakh without the, we're not allowed to add, of course. I'm just, it's a rhetorical question. Maybe we should just add a few more books, but the Chamesh Chum Torah, the Torah from Moshe, seemingly should be only only the mitzvahs. Exactly, the, exactly. Should be. The Chorah, that's the Torah, is a book of laws. Thou shall, thou shall not. So we can have the I mean, background. Where did you fight? Said that, I agree. So we can have. Thank people to like that. Need a little explanation. At the end of the day, there are many more books, and we have the Medrash, and we have the Agadat and the Talmud. So we could have a special set. Oh, very good. Excellent. That's excellent. That's. I asked enough rhetorical questions to bring to bring up. That is exactly what almost every sikha of the Rebbe discusses. The Torah is Torah Chaim, Torah of life. Not just telling us what happened in the year 2448 or 2488 or, or all those wonderful uh, history uh, and from the creation of the world 5,782 years ago, but also in, in 2022, 5,782 today, how we should live our lives. And that's the most important part, no? That, that, that's the most important thing. So we can learn something. So that even from the story of Moshe Rabbeinu, how Moshe... How, how Moshe um, hit, hit the rock and didn't only talk to the rock, how we can learn for our lives in, in our service of Hashem. So, speaking about water, water is a very essential thing in our life. When they went to the moon, the first thing they looked for was water. They wanted to see if there's water, then that means that there's a sign of life, human life. Because having life is really, it's dependent on water. Water apparently is, I think, 80% of a person's body. Water plays a major role in, 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 in life. They didn't find water. They found the Kabbalah. So. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Also, in the beginning of this week's parsha, we talk about purity and impurity. Tuma vitara, para duma, the red heifer. How to purify someone, even from the greatest level of impurity? How was that done? Through water. Water. We have a, a phrase which says, "Ein mayim ela Torah." There is no. What is water written? There's no other interpretation of water, only Torah. Obviously, it also means Torah. But we're trying to emphasize how much water is connected to Torah. Water is a symbol of life. When? Nachon. Nachon. But, but for this purpose, we're talking about water, which is essential. So too, Torah is also essential. So basically, the water can lift us up to a very high level. We also have the idea, just an interesting point, which is connected to this in Marsha, in, in Torah. Um, okay, so also it says when well, Mashiach is going to come, it says that the, the, the Rambam elaborates on this, that the, the knowledge of Hashem in the world will be like water fills, excuse me, the seabed. That's how much there's going to be knowledge of Hashem. They are Hashem. So this is what Am Yisrael was pleading by Hashem. Bavakasha, by Mutamosha. We don't have water. Bavakasha, tavilanu mayim. We want to learn Torah. Like it says in the Navi, to speak with the Navi. Here's a quote. Hoi, kol tzame l'chula mayim. The Navi says, whoa, anyone who is thirsty... Go drink water. What does that mean? He was trying to say, very often the Nevi'im would speak in riddles. And so this Navi was saying, Bavakasha, go drink water. You're thirsty? You're needy? Drink water and, and, and quench your thirst. 
there was once a, a letter that someone wrote. He didn't he didn't consider himself to be from, but he wrote a, an open letter to God. This is what he wrote. He says, "Someone, my friend, told me to talk to you, God. Maybe you could tell me who I am. I've I've got I've been lost for too much for too long. I don't know anymore where I belong to. My only dream is." My dear God, that you should hold my hand. I'm standing here, I'm talking to you, and all of a sudden, I'm starting to realize who I am. I know that in the past, I've gotten really lost, but Hashem, I'm standing here next to you, holding your hand to be part of your plan, part of your puzzle in the creation of the world even though I have many questions that I still want to ask, but I feel deep down to where that I believe that I belong to you. And at the end of the day, with all my questions, with all my tests and all my, 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 my falls, I send you, I send you my message, dear God. And I ask you to continue to hold my hand. Please, Hashem, never leave go of my hand. Just like Am Yisrael looks for water and looks for a way to lift up and to, re- and to strengthen the connection with Hashem, so too, every, each one of us has to ask ourselves, how can I reveal the water within me? There is just a, a symbol of what we should be doing. How can I connect my stream of water to you. After all, the Kadosh Baruch Hu is the, the ultimate Kedusha. We are down here. We have a Neshama. And the Torah is the water which connects. In fact, in the Halacha, the laws of Mikvah, one of the laws of how we can connect water is called a Sinuk, where you have water flowing down from top and the water connects the upper water and the lower water. It's just an interesting point that Kolzman, all the while that it's still running or it's still connected, that connects the water to the base of, of the mikvah. There has to be a certain amount in the body of the mikvah. There has to be a certain amount of water. And there are different halachot. So being damp, but here's another interesting um, halacha when it comes to purity and impurity. It says that the concept is Sometimes you wash your hand and it's wet. Either you didn't find a towel or the towel didn't dry totally. And when you touch the table or you touch something else, then that also becomes that also becomes damp. So when you have you want to be inspired, we just finished saying that inspiration is connected to water dampness. And sometimes you're inspired, but it only stays by you. You dry your hand, and you're you're inspired, and that's it. But sometimes, what's the goal? What's the purpose? That when we become wet, we become damp. We become inspired by a vart a story, a word of Torah. We should also try to get some, try to inspire someone else, to influence someone else, not to keep it for ourselves. Once again. That's the difference between water and dampness and something which is dry. Dry is compared to, to something which is not necessarily Kedusha, but water is life. It flows. It's pleasant. That's Torah, Kedusha, and life. So what's the difference between the way Hashem, Hashem said to Moshe back then to hit the, the Tzor, the foundation stone? Is that what it's called? Foundation stone. It's it's used in building too. Foundation stone. Okay. And here we're talking about the cellar, a rock, regular regular rock. The difference is that sur is one big unit. A mahut mikshachat. We said a few weeks ago, but the menorah was made out of one big unit of gold. Also, the sur sur is like the source. That's where the, the foundation, where the mountains of rock. On the other hand, the sella is a bunch. One rock, a regular. Now, sometimes, so the tzur, 
represents those neshamot that are on a very low level. They haven't been, see, at least the sela, the rock, it's already been around. It's already, it's already been, been, uh, been here, but it's already, it's already been related perhaps to, to life. But the rock that never was never touched, the untouched foundation stone, is 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 untapped. It's still it's it's still it's still very raw. So that represents a Jew which has not yet been 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 in touch with his neshama. On the other hand, the Sela is someone that's already involved. So Hashem said to, to Moshe, hit the sword. He didn't mean to hit it in in in, uh, in the configurative level, not literally. You know, we say, for example, wait, wait, wait. You said oh, Hashem you told, you? told Moshe, not not in the sixth parsha. Back then in Bishalach, right after right after we we, we crossed over the Yamsif. So here, here's a good example. We have. I'm just going to give you an example or a couple of examples where hitting doesn't necessarily mean literal. Lavdafkash is a It says, even every blade of grass has a malach, has an angel, which hits it and says, gidol, grow. In other words, that it's all, there's always a shem which is involved personally in every detail in the world, every Every step, every detail in the world. So it doesn't take a, a stick and hit it. Make, it, it says, it's a, it's a concept of it. It pushes it. It, it, it inspires it. It says, keep on going. Come on. You could do it. Keep on. Push is perhaps a little bit of a, of, of more of a stronger, not just talking. It's like something's going to give a real push. It's not just. So push can be sometimes to say a word, which is. A little more, a little stronger, a little more encouraging, and sometimes one has to say something which is even, e- even stronger. It says, for example, someone that loves their son, someone who who refrains, who holds back a staff, stick from hitting their son, then it's sonebino. He hates his son. In other words, it doesn't necessarily mean that a person chas v'shalom. Should hit their child. Once on a blue moon, maybe sometimes it's needed. The point is that a person should be stern sometimes and to bring the point across. I'll give an example, another example. Educate, but not just educate, and sometimes in a in a in, in more of a strong way. We talk a framework, and then you can show your love. Then you can show your affection, but if the child in the classroom as well, the child doesn't know the rules. It's not that that's not good. I'll give an example. I think this is a pretty good example. It says that erev Shabbat, an alacha, an erev Shabbat, a person like a person should should ask their family. Isartem, you do the maaser. From the food for Shabbat, he blocked them. Did you light the candles yet? Um, he robbed them. Did you do the eruv? And apparently, it's supposed to be very sternly. I don't know if it means screaming. I don't. You have to look at the exact wording. But then it says in the commentaries that you're supposed to make as if you're acting stern, not really um, be upset because we're not supposed to be upset ever, especially before Shabbat when. When the Yetzirah is trying to make arguments, to make as if what they say in Hebrew, ke'ilu, or in English, like as if you're doing. It. And so, th- this is the 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 message that sometimes the hitting sh- should be literal, but sometimes it can be b'dibur, it can be with speaking. The Dibarta Melasela. Either way, we're trying to get water from this from the rough. Either way, whether it's hitting with a staff or configuratively hitting or speaking, the concept, not literal. But at the end of the day, we're trying to get 
water from the rock. Like we said before, that either way, it's a miracle. The fact itself that water comes from a, can come from a rock, that itself is miraculous. We still expect of Moshe to show us an example of what it means to listen to Hashem till the end, not to make our own calculations. Yeah, that's the name of the parsha, Chukat. Chukat are those mitzvahs which are above understanding. We don't, y- Yiddishkeit is not just what we understand in our own calculations and how it could work. But, but whatever Hashem says, we take it till the end. So, as I told you earlier, we're, we're basically strengthening the question. This whole time where we're saying it's a beautiful explanation of why Hashem said over here to hit the rock and everybody said, but at the end of the day, if Hashem says you do something, you do it the way he said. You don't, you don't uh, make, make, make calculations of what, how we view Moshe. What was Hashem's plan? I don't know exactly what Hashem's plan is, but there's no question that it would have been a big, huge Kiddush Hashem. That says in the Torah clearly. The whole world would have seen, wow, that Moshe speaks to the rock and water comes from it. It would be a huge Kiddush Hashem. The, the hitting the rock is there, you might say there's something hiding inside. But just speaking to the rock, in 2022, you could speak to the rock, to this rock over here, which is projecting the zoom, and uh, it does things. It can, you just say, talk to it, and it does things, and, and you can talk to someone on the other end of the world. And, and uh, at the same time, that, that's also talking to the rock. But in, in those days, who, who, could, who could talk to a rock? Moshe Rabbeinu, if he is supposed to be showing us a good example, of exactly what you're saying, to sanctify Hashem's name. And even if we don't know exactly how to do it, and we don't know why, and we don't know how, but we, we seek advice, we seek uh, direction, and we should aspire to observe all the mitzvot, even those which are not so easy to, to, to keep, to observe. We have to, to work hard, to work hard, to, for sure, to do the mitzvot properly. And that's exactly what Moshe should be showing us. We have enough excuses why it's hard to do this, why we didn't understand that. There's a famous joke of, of, uh, of the two spouses. They speak two different languages. So they can, uh, two individuals. So one spouse, one individual says to the other, they always say, I didn't understand what, what, what he was talking about. So we have to learn. We, have, we were trying to build a relationship with Hashem. We have to learn his language. We have to learn the codes. So usually, as far as the mitzvahs, they agree on, on the mitzvah usually as far as the, hala, the halakha. There are minhagim here and there. There are minor minor things. But begadol, in the bigger picture, it's pretty much an interpretation is based on authentic halakha, then you're okay. As long as we're connected to Moshe Rabbeinu. Like we learned last week about Korach that went, went against Moshe. Once you go against Moshe, that's the slippery slope. But if you're connected to Moshe, and Moshe in the Gemara in the Torah itself, it tells you how to interpret the Torah. So you should be in the right direction. Both Hilo and Shammai, for example, and Dafka taking these examples because these are people that argued Hilo and Shammai 2,000 years ago. So even then, they're both Elu Elu, Elokim Chaim. They're both part of the Torah. I'm just trying to uh, separate between this, Hilo and Shammai, and Chas Shalom Reformer Conservative. Those are not considered um, a sect of this. I'm, that's, I'm, I, it's important to me that we that we clarify. So so it's, it's okay if there there are different interpretations within the framework of Allah, It's fine. Kind of like a difference in the in the, the, the fences. I think they could be. I, I think it's uh, beautiful that. We have different people. We have different ways of thinking within the framework. I, mean, I keep on saying it again because it's so important not to not to learn, understand my words wrong. It's nice that everyone has their menag, and I think it's nice that even if you have uh, a couple, that one is uh, a Sephardi, one is Ashkenaz, and have each one brings their own custom to the table, and uh, uh, the Torah is, is harmonious and not and uh, not just one color. I think it's I think it's very nice. I think it's a difference in the fences. That's another. That's another. Very good point. We have to. There's a fence. 
Okay. So the, your example is very good, but the kidney out on Pesach. It's, it's a great. It's not chametz, but if you look at the, at, at what I forgot exactly, who, I, I believe it was uh, the Rishonim, the Rishonim even, which are lived eight hundred years ago, wrote very very severe things about someone. Obviously, in the Ashkenazic world who eats who eat uh, um, kidney out rice on, on Pesach. So I'm just saying it's not just a uh, um, little thing here or there. I'm, I'm just saying that it's that these things are, we have to be very careful. Everyone, according to their own um, tradition and, and, uh, and custom. I, 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 I can talk for Chabad. Chabad. As far as I'm That's concerned, everyone's accepted. Between Chabad and all the others. Right. Thank you. <laughs> everyone's accepted. That everyone should be accepted. If I'm shot, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. I said, I don't, it's, a good, it's a good question. I don't understand that. As far as I'm concerned, everyone's accepted. I accept so everyone. everyone. Okay. Is there a term for mitzvot that are not keen on mitzvot? Yes. Mishpatim, uh, mishpatim are those mitzvot that we understand. I got it. There's also eduyot, edu testimonies, which are somewhere in the middle. <laughs> Correct. There are different types of mitzvot. But there's no question that paraduma, mitzvot of this week's parasha, is the, is the extreme example of even Shlomo Amal that understood many of the mitzvot did not, un- did not understand this was. For, they, were used, they were used to it for 40 years while Miriam was alive in her merit that they had water. So just keep, keep on flowing. So he was talking to a boulder, which was the foundation of a mountain. And no, no, that, that was give me some no, water. It, it's, the boulder was in, in Bishala. This one was a rock. There were no, a bunch of rocks together, the cellar. And this was just one round. That's also right. And so, what we can learn from this is when we're trying to speak to a friend or a colleague or another person, and we're trying to inspire them with water, quote unquote, with Torah and, and, and Kedusha. And we see there's, it's not, it's not rubbing off. It's just, there's no water coming forth. You're talking to the wall, or in this case, you're talking to the rock. And it can, sometimes it can be very... Uh, um, so the message is, keep on talking, don't stop talking. Because everyone, everyone has a heart, everyone has eyes, and everyone has ears. And if you, if you see that water didn't come yet, keep on talking. Don't hit. Don't 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 get physical. Not only in the physical sense, but don't get too harsh. Keep on keep on trying, because you will be successful. This is this is the message. Zam Messer. This is the message that Hashem is teaching Moshe and really teaching us each and every one of us. Which, just to strengthen the question, which we've been saying all along, one of the great songs in Chabad. And Allah, Allah, he hit the rock and water came out. Why would you make a song out of this? <laughs> it's like saying, uh, the spies entered to Israel because of them. We're 40 years in the desert. <laughs> yeah, That's what it's like. I'm making a special dance for it. <laughs> I won't, it doesn't, doesn't seem to make any sense. So obviously this whole story is on a deeper level. It's not just literal because if it was only literal, then we wouldn't make a song out of it. So there, there's no question that Moshe, I, I think the answer, we're just, I, I'm just going to leave you with one point that hopefully you can think about. I don't know if it's going to be enough of an answer, but for me, it definitely brings out something very beautiful. And that is that after all the question that we asked, how could Moshe do it? Moshe should have been, with all the calculations, he should have been more dedicated. He should have been more um, uh, masur, dedicated. That's the right word. And, and, um, and listening to Hashem. So here's the answer. What would happen... If he would talk to the rock, then the nations of the world would say, look, he spoke to our rock and the rock listened and he speaks to his people and they're so stubborn 
they never listen or they they rarely listen and it would be it would be on one hand a kiddush hashem a sanctification of hashem's name because then people would understand hey look hashem's leader moshe leader for his, for his people got a rock to give water but moshe said ultimately it would be a chilul hashem ultimately it would be a desecration of hashem's name because then people would say look at his nation Look at these people. They don't even. They don't even, look at the rock. The rock listen, and they don't listen. So basically, it's not an excuse for why Moshe acted like. Into who Moshe was, that's a real leader. A leader is someone who was willing to put himself to the side. Perhaps one of his greatest uh, aspirations was to come into Eretz Yisrael. He was willing to put even that aside for who. For his people who never listened to him, who drove him crazy for 40 years, stubborn, <laughs> stiff. Uh, I'm, I'm happy to hear just one second, please. So it's not it's not a, an excuse why he did it, because at the end of the day, you gotta listen with all the calculations. But it gives us hopefully some kind of insight into what a true leader is, not only being dedicated to Hashem, but in a sense, in a sense, I know I'm saying something very, very, very extreme. As far as for who who we are and who we have to who we have to look look up to as leaders, unfortunately today we don't really have real real leaders who are willing to put they they have I call double sided tape stick sticking them to, to the to the chair. They don't want to do anything they can to be real. I'm going to remind you. So someone once said. The Rebbe has volumes of interpretations. In, well, let me just please finish the set on Rashi. Let me just give you an example, an outside example. The Rambam, Nikamara, you have been shown him all kinds of explanations. Someone once asked, I wonder if Rashi knew all of the Rebbe's explanations. Fascinating, deeper in Yena uh, Torah in Rashi. What am I trying to say? The way it works in Torah is, in Yiddishkeit, is that sin by Atzadik. A tzaddik does the right thing. I'm not sure. I'm not sure at what point he is conscious about certain points and which points are maybe subconscious. But there's no question that he, he on some level, he did have this in mind. I don't know if he made the calculation consciously. I don't know. But there's no question that he did on some level have this in mind. I, I think on the contrary, look at what Hanan, look in the next few, in, in about five or six weeks, we're going to read about, he pleaded, he pleaded from the bottom of his heart. He said 515 tefillot. On the contrary, we see how much he wanted. It was a side issue that got into it. But if, if that was not plan A, everyone should have a Shabbat Shalom. Welcome to join us for the special Farbrengen tomorrow, right after davening at Chabad. Big meal.